Hello everyone, Sally here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you something very nice that we've been needing and wanting on Bedrock Edition for a very, very long time. And that is an F3 and debug screen. And as you can see, we now have this on Bedrock Edition. In today's video, I'll be showcasing this add-on from Lucas and showing you how to use it, everything that you need to know about it, and how to install it on your world. This add-on works for console, PC, and mobile as well, so you can use it where wherever you want to and as you can see it shows you all kinds of really really useful information such as what biome you're in what the light level is what direction you're facing your coordinates if you're in a village if you're underground and all kinds of other really cool and useful things as well honestly it's a really really nice thing and i think you guys will enjoy this in your bedrock edition worlds a really nice thing about this add-on is that it works in multiplayer and on realms, so you can play with other people and still have the debug screen working, which is really cool. And of course, a massive thank you to Lucas for creating this add-on. They've been working on this for the last couple of months, and you can find a download link to this on MCPEDL, linked down in the description. Keep your eyes peeled for future updates, of course, because this is still in development, so you might see additional features and other things get added to the website in general. Now, of course, there's a ton of details on MCPEDL. Basically, every single thing that you need to know about this add-on can be found on the download link, so make sure to check that out before installing this in your worlds in case anything has changed after this video releases. Enough jibber-jabber. Let's talk about all the features of this debug screen. Starting at the top left, you can see that it shows you your or game mode and of course if we switch to game mode survival it'll update to survival mode which is very cool below that you can see e and that shows all entities within your draw distance counting mobs and other entities like that which is a very very useful thing to have so if we just go ahead and kill at e real quick you'll see that it actually jumps up because of all the items and then if we kill it a couple more times it goes down significantly below e you can see game efficiency which is calculating how well the game game is performing and that should be at 100% basically all the time as long as the game is working well. If it's down to around 50% then there should be something pretty massive that is impacting your performance and if that is at zero your game's gonna be dead basically. <laughs> On that same note, you can also see vanilla server at 20 ticks, and that shows you the TPS of the server, which is also kind of an indicator of lag. That should pretty much always be at 20. If it dips any lower, then you're experiencing some lag as well. Moving into the more useful things, below that you can see it shows what dimension we're in. So of course we are in the overworld, and below that it shows your coordinates as well. Coordinates will need to be turned on as a game rule to see those, but that kind of replaces like the regular standard coordinates at the top left below that you can see what direction we're facing so we know that that way is north towards negative z if we turn to the right of course that is east towards positive x and then we got south over there and west over there which is also incredibly helpful for so many things Below that, we also have a light level indicator as well. So as you can see right now, it's at 15. And if we switch it to midnight, as you can see, it updates to light level of four, which is incredibly convenient for finding out where mobs can spawn in your world, finding out if something is spawn proof and building mob farms too. Light levels are incredibly helpful and this is just such a cool thing and probably one of the best features of this add-on, if I'm being honest. Moving on down the row, we have a biome, and this shows you what biome you are currently standing in. So if we walk around this way, you can see this is a mesa, this over here is a desert, over here we have a little bit of a beach biome, and then if we keep on walking this direction, you'll see that it goes to jungle edge, and then eventually it'll turn into jungle two. This works for every single biome in the game, and no matter what dimension you are in, it will accurately show you what biome you're standing in. Moving on down the row, we have some world information. So, of course, the difficulty shows you what difficulty you're on. This world is currently on normal difficulty. If we change that to hard, of course, it will be updated. And then below that, you can also see the time as well. That shows you how many actual days have passed in your world. So, if I run this little command to add 24,000 to the time, that's going to add one additional day to the counter. Now, something about this counter is if you have daylight cycle turned off, that counter is never going to be updated. It only updates if you have daylight cycle turned on, of course. 
Moving to the upper right of the debug screen, you can see some general computer information about what you're playing on, what graphics engine you're using, what UI type, and of course the input method too. It also shows some additional world information on the right side too, such as if it is raining. So if we switch it to rain, of course that's gonna switch over to true. And of course, if it's a thunderstorm, it's also gonna be saying that it's raining too. The debug screen also shows the moon phase as well, which is a really cool thing that I'm not sure how useful it is, but as you can see, if we add a 24,000 to the time, the moon phase will change. And so does the debug screen as well. Very, very cool stuff, actually. One of the final things this add-on tells you is if you are in a village or not. And as you can see, we have a bed and a villager over there, which is creating a village. And I just entered it. If we back up a little bit, we are going to leave the actual village itself. And this is going to be incredibly helpful for all kinds of villager tech and just playing with villagers in general. Keep in mind, this doesn't tell you if you're in an actual village structure, because of course the housing has no impact on anything. What this tells you is if you're in an actual real village created by beds and villagers. And the final piece of information is if you are underground or not, which can also be incredibly helpful in a variety of situations. As you can see, I've tested a bunch of different blocks over here and none of these trigger the is underground except the cobwebs which is kind of interesting so of course this will activate anytime you have a solid block above your head because you are technically under some ground yeah, it's actually pretty straightforward, but again, this can be very, very helpful for building mob farms, for knowing what can spawn around you, where, when, and how, and in general, just so much information is easily acquirable using this add-on. It's going to make so many things way easier and way more possible and way quicker to do with this little add-on. It's actually something that we've been needing on Bedrock Edition for a very, very long time. So let's hop into a basic and quick tutorial on how to download this add-on. It is a pretty straightforward, however, there's a lot of additional information on the download page on MCPEDL. So I would recommend that you read this entire thing. It won't take you more than a couple of minutes, and then you know absolutely everything that there is to know about this add-on. So simply go to the link in the description, click that, and then scroll down to the bottom after reading the entire page. And then after you click the download link, you will eventually get to this download. Once you have this onto your device, you simply double tap that and that'll start importing it into Minecraft. So once you've decided what world you want to add the debug screen to, you need to open the world settings using the pencil button. And then we need to scroll down here and make sure that you have show coordinates turned on. And then you need to scroll down even further and turn on two experimental modes. Currently, these experimental modes are necessary for it to work, but you might not need to turn these on in the future once they are no longer in experimental mode so we're going to turn on holiday creator features that is going to make a copy of your world open up that copy and then we also need to turn on additional modding capabilities as well we're going to scroll down to the bottom left and click on the behavior packs button and once we're in here we're going to click on the my packs you want to click on the java debug screen for bedrock and simply hit activate on that one this will turn off achievements on your world forever and there's really no way to work around that when using an add-on so just go ahead and hit continue there is also of course the remover and uninstaller and this is all explained on the download page of the website so and now we can back out of here and we need to go to the main menu go to your settings page go to your global resources hit my packs and then we need to turn on the actual resource pack for the debug screen as well. Activate this, and then if you see any error messages, just go ahead and hit continue. And you need to make sure this texture pack is above all of your other texture packs as well, otherwise it may not function properly. So once you have that resource pack turned on, you can now go ahead and load up your world, and the debug screen will be successfully installed. And that is pretty much all there is to it. As you can see, we are now in the world. We can press F8 if we are on a computer, and the debug screen is there showing all of the 
proper information. If you want other people in the world to be able to use the debug screen, what you need to do is open up the world settings, go to your resource packs, hit my packs, and then simply turn on the debug screen texture pack. And then you need to hit require players to accept resource packs when they join. That's kind of an optional option, but that ensures that they do actually download the pack and can use the debug screen when they join your world. And this is also how you get this add-on onto a realm as well. If we wanted to, we could then upload this world to a realm and it would be good to go. So of course, this isn't really ideal. Using an add-on is kind of unfortunate because it does turn off of those achievements. But at the current point in time, this is really about the best that we're going to be getting on Bedrock Edition. Hopefully sometime in the future, as additional features are added, then hopefully this can just become a resource pack and you don't need to turn off achievements or anything like that. But but that is pretty much all there is to it. As you can tell, it is a really, really cool add-on. Really, really impressive and super nice to have. This is going to be incredibly helpful for just so many countless things on a Bedrock Edition. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, then of course let us know in the comment section down below. But also make sure to read the download page. There is so much information over there. Anyway, that's going to do it for this little showcase video. Thank you again to Lucas and thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, then of course make sure to leave a like on the video possibly subscribe if you are new here and i will see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one thanks again for watching and then there was silence